Now I'm going to show you how to create uh, PLC inputs and outputs. I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to draw a very basic box which is going to be the starting point. I'll window around it, right click and choose block and I'm going to create this and this is important, I need to create it as a PLC signal. The software will now prompt me, put all the attributes on there and I can put uh, an address, perhaps it's 0.1. I'll put some text in there for now just to see where that text actually is and I can see the information on there. Now it's facing the wrong way so what I'm going to do is right click and explode and I'm going to use edit text and I'm going to rotate this or put this as being left justified instead of right justified. So a very quick change. Um, I'm also going to move that description down a short way and I'm going to rotate it. So control E to, rot to edit the text and I'm going to rotate it by 60 and have it right justified. So I've got this coming off at an angle. I've got a bit more space to, to see that text now. And position that just there. And I'm going to make this box using the grips a little bit bigger. So I've got the device ID, the address, and a connection point. I could move the connection point if I want and get rid of the line, but I quite like it, so I'm going to leave that there. So I'm now going to right-click, choose block, and put it back as a signal. So I've moved the bits around. Now for now, I'm going to remove the actual comments and the text, because I know where it is now. Put that back to address number one, and I have one PLC input. What I'm going to do now is move that across and control C to copy, control V to paste, and I'm going to paste it seven times. So I'll type seven before I click on the page, and then I'm going to click place that down, and I'm going to turn off the ID on this one and put that in connection two. It's already addressed it as number two. Same thing for the next one. I'm going to set this one as three. Turn off that one and set that as four. So I'm now setting this up to allow me to put, in this case, just eight inputs across the page. So fairly straightforward. So before I copied and pasted, um, I typed in the number seven to have a, a copy of uh, seven of those. So what I can do now with that is actually just window around, select those, and add that to a block now in this case I'm just going to add it to a macro group so that they are now grouped together and if I was to copy control C and control V so imagine I had a new one I placed it down I could then type in the new ID type in the first address and say that's 2.0 and then click on OK and I can see that the software is then automatically numbering that across and for each of these I can put in a description and a comment. Double clicking on each one, although it's part of a group, allows me to do that. I can also, because these are PLC signals, go down to database and go to editor PLC IO and I can see a list of those addresses and information in there. If I had some more space, I could also edit that information directly from the database editor. So these functions are available in the standard to the advanced versions. The automatic numbering is happening because when I right click on circuit diagrams and choose properties, I set PLC numbering instead of free to be, in this case, decimal. So it's automatically numbering up. If I wanted to now, I could go into symbols and if I just pin that for the moment into my custom one, create a new folder and call it PLC. And I can drop that, remember to drop it from or drag it from the connection point you want to be holding it from. I'm going to call that eight inputs. Now at the moment everything works fine and I have connections on there. If I turn on connections I can draw wires to it but at the moment there's no part number um, and there's no central way of seeing all of the uh, I.O. from one particular place. So what we could do at that point is create a PLC main symbol. 
it's not essential but if you want the part number to appear in the bill of materials you'll have to create something like this which if I just go down to uh, IC 617 if I go down to PLC then I can see lots of reference signals in fact sorry there is a completely separate group for PLC that's the one I was looking for digital inputs and I can choose a reference card in this case it's got eight inputs uh, let me create a new page for that one place that on there and I can see that when I double click on that it's made up of eight PLC signal symbols and I can see all of the connections and addresses down there for that. If I was to go back to my new symbol, place that in, if I call it K6, I can now search and pick up one of the addresses and that information is now referencing with the information on the main reference card. So that's the correct way of doing it, but you can just use the input symbols if you want to.